Hey everybody, today I want to talk about another data structure, specifically graphs, what they are, how they're used, and a tool that you may not be familiar with that can be helpful in visualizing them. Hey, welcome back everybody. I get a lot of topic requests and one of the most common ones that I've received is graphs. Basically the graph data structure, how they work, what they are, how to implement them. And graphs are gonna be too big of a topic for me to cover in one video, but today I wanted to start out by discussing conceptually what graphs are, when you might use them, how they work, some terminology. And I also wanted to show you a tool that I use a lot for visualizing graphs that can be really handy as you're starting to play around with them and get a feel for what they are. Also, this video is brought to you by all the wonderful people who support this channel through Patreon. A big thanks to people like Mary Schubert, Florian Summer, and Satan Albader who have all helped to make this channel what it is today. There's more information about that and also my courses down in the description. But now back to graphs. So a quick clarification, if you've never heard about graphs, your first thing that might come to your mind is uh, the graphs, the things you did in math class where you're graphing data, you know, a linear graph, a quadratic graph, whatever. That's not what we're talking about today. What we're talking about today is the graph data structure. And specifically, when you hear programmers talk about graphs, often what they're talking about is a data structure that comes in handy in a lot of our programs. So graphs are a lot like trees. If you don't know what trees are, you might want to check out my other videos just to make sure you're not lost, because I'm going to assume that you have a basic understanding of what trees are. I'll link to those down in the description. But just like trees, graphs have nodes and edges. Nodes store data, pretty much any data elements you want to store in your program, and edges describe the connections between those nodes. Sometimes a node is also called a vertex. So you, you can have nodes, you can have vertices, they're the same thing. We're talking about the same thing. But a graph is different from a tree in that a tree always starts at a root and ends up at leaves. So you can always reach every node by starting at the root and following some path through the tree down to its leaves. And in a tree, you have these parent-child relationships. In a graph, things are much less constrained. For example, with a graph, there is no starting point. We don't have this concept of leaves and roots. We just have nodes and edges and any node can be connected to any edge. And we often use graphs to represent data sets that are connected, where data is connected in different ways, but it's not hierarchical. For example, a tree might make sense if we're talking about families, where you have parent-child relationships, but what if we're trying to represent social networks? You know, social networks feel more like graphs because you have people, but anyone can be anyone's friend. Or say we wanted to do contact tracing for infectious diseases. And I just wanted to keep track of which people other people interacted with or came in contact with during the past week. So that sounds like something that I would use a graph for. Also, while we're defining things inside of our graph, our edges can be directed or undirected. So directed edges, they have a direction. They go from one node to another or one vertex to another and undirected, well, they don't have a direction. For example, let's say that I'm trying to represent contact tracing. Well, each edge represents a contact between two people, the nodes, right? Well, there is no concept of direction here. Nodes Mike and Jane were in contact, that's it, they're in contact. We aren't storing any information about who initiated the contact because in this application, it doesn't matter. So this edge here would be an undirected edge because there is no concept of direction and a graph with undirected edges we'll call an undirected graph. On the other hand, what if I'm writing a dating app and I'm trying to represent who is interested in whom? Well, now this is looking more directional because Mike might like Jane and Jane might not like Mike. And so we stick arrows on these edges and we call them directed. Here, direction matters. And as much as we would sometimes like dating interest to be undirected, it isn't. So this sort of graph with directed edges, we call a directed graph. And like I mentioned before, with these graphs, we don't talk about parents and children. We talk about neighbors and we talk about nodes or vertexes being adjacent to each other. And when it comes to implementing these in our programs, there are a bunch of different ways that we can implement graphs in our programs, and I'm going to dive into each of these separately in future videos. And of course, those videos will involve implementations, and we're going we're gonna to definitely write some code. But today, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about how we represent graphs, because I think that will come in handy in those future videos. And it just provides a good groundwork for what we're going to be talking about in the future. And the reason this is important is that often when we start implementing data structures, we want to be able to represent that data structure, what it looks like, and so we can make sure that, that our mental model is actually matching up to 
what's happening in our code. And with things like lists and trees, that's pretty straightforward. We can just print out a representation of a list, print out a representation to a tree. Not really that complicated. We've done that in previous videos. And there are a bunch of different ways that we can print out graphs, but with graphs, because they're a little more freeform, it may be a little less intuitive. You may be like, well, how should I represent it? There's a lot of different ways. And I want to give you an idea today. And I wanted to do that by showing you a quick tool okay, that can make a life a bit easier when working with graphs in your programs. And actually, it's really a family of tools called GraphViz, which, as the name would imply, are a bunch of tools for visualizing graphs. I'm going to show you one of those tools, the one that I find myself using a lot when I'm working with graphs, and that is Dot. OK, so Dot is just a program that we run from the command line. Um, we'll get into some more details about how that works. But Dot uses a simple language to represent graphs. And let me just show you a quick example. We can come in here and we can just say, let's make a graph and so it looks like a program, like we use curly braces, like we would a block of code. And now in here, I can add edges. Let's say that let's say that if I just put graph here, it's going to be an undirected graph. And let's just say we have, let's say we're doing contact tracing. And so let's get some data. We're going to say Mike is connected to Jane. We use semicolons to separate out our nodes or vertexes. Uh, so we'll connect Jane. She was in contact with Steve. Susan was in contact with Carrie. Josie was in contact with John. John was in contact with Mike. And let's say John was also in contact with Jane. OK, so I basically this is a really simple way for me to represent a graph. And then basically all the dot allows me to do is now that I've saved this file, I can come in here and say dot example dot dot. This is going to be the input to it. I can also just take input directly from standard out or standard in. And then I'm going to tell it in this case, I want to create PDFs. You can actually create whatever you want. There's a lot of different options here. I'm just going to create a PDF. And then we're just going to dump the output to graph.pdf. It could be whatever I decide to name it. I'm just calling it graph.pdf. And then this basically created a PDF image, which, yeah, forget VS Code is not going to show that to me. So let's go just open it up. And you can see here, here, let me just scale this down so it'll show up a little bit better. And we can zoom out and you can see. So it basically just created this PDF of the graph that I had just described. And you can see the edges are all there. And um, I probably spelled carry wrong. Anyway, that doesn't matter, whatever. The point is, is that this is a really quick and easy way to represent graphs in your programs. OK, let's jump back. And I just want to show you one other little thing here. So that's example number one. Let's just if we copy this over to example two here, then I can also do directed graphs. So if I put die graph here, that's saying I want a directed graph. And so then instead of just having the two hyphens, I'm actually going to put arrows here and specify the direction of these edges. And let's just change because no self-respecting carry is going to spell their name that way. Um, Actually, it might be true. I'm really sorry if somebody does spell their name that way. Anyway, and then I can come in here and we can just let's specify our new example two dot dot and we'll make graph two dot PDF. And now we can open this one up and you can see the same kind of thing. Only now we have arrows. So now you can see the direction that these edges are going. And folks, there are a lot of other tools that you can represent things. What I like about dot is that it is really easy to just this language is simple enough that it's really easy for you to just have your programs produce dot output. And so not only is it pretty easy to read just on the terminal, but then I can also generate whatever PDF, SVG, whatever format, you know, if I want a PNG, a JPEG, whatever, I can generate that with dot. And that's nice for things like presentations and stuff like that. So anyway, I hope that's helpful. We will implement graphs next week or sometime soon. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss those future videos. And I will see you next week.